first of all, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, I greatly thank the uh, Professor Masha uh, Shefra and uh, Professor Koshiba and Lassi uh, Yamamoto-san. So I would like to start out. The, let me briefly explain the, what imaging metabolomics is. The, so far as I uh, know, the, there, is, there are two uh, different methodology uh, for the imaging metabolomics, which grab the spatial information of the many metabolites from the frozen tissues. So when you think about uh, histology, so the sample should be fresh frozen for uh, imaging metabolomics. On the other hand, the many people utilize formalin fixed uh, 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 paraffin embedded, that is called FFPE, as you see uh, in the lower side. So right now, the FFPE sample allows us to uh, correct the information about the transcript. Or if we use the immunohistochemistry, so we can see the localization of the protein in the tissue. However, once the tissue can be treated with FFPE. So we cannot see any information about the metabolomics uh, because it's gone. So in order to grab the information, we need a fresh frozen sample. So that means in order to uh, correct the information of the multi-omics uh, data, we need to go back and forth the fresh frozen and the FFPE and the, uh, 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 together with a pathological finding. And uh, imaging mass spectrometry and the surface enhanced Raman imaging, uh, there is also uh, the great difference. So in case of imaging mass spectrometry in the left side, so we need the very strong ultraviolet irradiation that causes the auto-oxidation or degradation of metabolites. On the other hand, the SARS imaging, which was developed in my laboratory, uh, that we just utilize is an infrared laser, the red one, uh, which enable to detect the redox metabolites without auto-oxidation. So that is the advantage. But the number of metabolites detected by uh, the technology is totally different. Imaging mass, you can grab the huge number of the metabolites. On the other hand, the SARS, there are so many unassigned metabolites, so which we need to assign after the experiment. But anyhow, I would like to show you uh, the, some data uh, using the uh, human uh, cancer sample. And uh, I don't like to go in detail about the technology for the Raman imaging, but uh, we utilize a nanotechnology in which you can see in the left upper side, this is a shape of the uh, gold nanoparticle, which allows us to bind the metabolites uh, on tissue. And once the gold, uh, nanoparticle can bind to the metabolites. So that causes the very specific vibration mode, which causes the Raman scattering light. And uh, we can check the uh, spectrum uh, by using this. And furthermore, the information can be corrected uh, as a function of the space. So, now you can see here the FFP sample, and here we investigated the ovarian cancer, and we have a two different cohort, discovery cohort and the validation cohort. And uh, uh, this is a, a previous, uh, this is a data of the previous uh, article which was published. And uh, you can see here the, the te robotics technology uh, of the protein immunohistochemistry screening in which we check uh, approximately the 1,200 different uh, proteins 
on human ovarian cancer tissues clearly indicated that one of the very interesting enzyme called CSE, that is, a, uh, the name is a cystocyanin gamma lyase, that this enzyme is abundantly expressed in patients with ovarian cancer with the very uh, bad prognosis, as you see here uh, in uh, uh, kaplan meyer plot. And if the CSE is expressed at a low level, so you can see the nice survival. So that indicate, that suggest the CSE is an independent factor, distinguish responder and non-responder after the post-operative chemotherapy. So this, what CSE is, so let me explain very briefly. You can see here the Warburg effect a metabolic map. The glucose is uh, thought to be converted into lactate. But uh, interestingly, the intermediate uh, glycolytic metabolite, that is called the 3 phosphoglycerate, which is also converted into serine, and then in the presence of a uh, methylated cycle, uh, you can see here the CSE. Uh, on in the midway of the trans sulfuration pathway. So this enzyme is necessary to produce the cysteine, but interestingly, if the substrate is cysteine, that is a dimer of cysteine, that causes a very toxic uh, par sulfide, cysteine par sulfide, and that is also cause the different sulfide species, and these species are called reactive sulfur species. So sometimes the reactive sulfur species are very toxic to the cell. On the other hand, that this reactive sulfur species play a very protective role for the cell death. So how the cancer cell function is uh, uh, modified by these uh, species, that is a question. So according to the ovarian cancer study, the CSE expression is an independent factor which determines the bad prognosis after the surgery. So we decided to check the polysulfide by using the uh, Raman scattering imaging technique. And you can, see, you can see here the typical representative picture of the polysulfide. The polysulfide cannot be detected by the imaging mass spectrometry, presumably because of the artificial oxidation of the polysulfide. Uh, the polysulfide is easily oxidized in the presence of the strong laser. However, under the infrared irradiation, so you can see the very nicely in the ovarian cancer, so you can see the signal of the polysulfide. And among among all ovarian cancer, so clear cell carcinoma, triple C, this is a very, very uh, resistant to the chemotherapy using the cisplatin. On the other hand, the serous adenocarcinoma, which is uh, sensitive to uh, the cisplatin treatment, so only low level of signal of polysulfide can be detected. And more importantly, so there is only a uh, 13 uh, different uh, individuals. So the prognosis uh, showing the low uh, polysulfide signal is very good. However, if there is any high polysulfide cases, so you can see the very poor survival. And I don't like to go in detail about the spectrum, but uh, what we see in this Raman imaging is actually polysulfide because you can see here in the left upper portion, the reagent uh, monobromobimane MBBR, which is a, a compound degrading the polysulfide. And if you drop uh, the small drop uh, we can uh, apply, 
on top of the tissue. So you can see here the complete uh, disappearance of the polysulfide signal. On the other hand, the byproduct after the reaction between the polysulfide and uh, uh, monoglobomimane, uh, which is a SDB. So you can see here the increase in the signal in the different wave numbers. So that clearly indicates the specificity of the signal. And also, more interestingly, uh, that there is a very interesting reagent, which is actually utilized for the clinical uh, fields, which is ambroxol, which is clinically used expectorant. This is very nicely uh, degrading the polysulfide. And if you use ambroxol together with a cisplatin, so the cisplatin resistant uh, ovarian cancer cells, it's a xenograft model. So you can see the uh, good, good effect on the enlargement of the tumor in vivo and also in vitro. The reason why the polysulfide causes the chemo resistance uh, is the following. The, as you know, the cisplatin can, uh, this is an intercalating reagent which is bind, binding to the uh, DNA strand. However, the polysulfide, the presence of the polysulfide, such as the Na2S2 or S3 or S4, so these reagent changes the chemical structure of the uh, uh, cisplatinum, and that interfere with the DNA intercalation. So that means the interaction between the cisplatin and the DNA is canceled. That might be the uh, 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 one of the mechanism by which the polysulfide uh, causes a chemo resistance. So, final question is, if the polysulfide role in the ovarian cancer is also observed in the other uh, intractable cancer, such as a pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma? And the answer is yes. And we combine the imaging mass spectrometry together with a Raman spectrometry and uh, this is uh, the representative picture indicating the, uh, the how the each individual metabolites are uh, seen in the pancreatic cancer tissues. As you know, the pancreatic cancer is characterized by the abundant amount of the cancer stroma versus cancer cells. And interestingly, you can see here, for example, the uh, glucose 6-phosphate, this is an intermediate metabolite of the glycolysis, which is highly localized in the cancer cell nest. On the other hand, you can see here the presence of the taurine, the huge amount of taurine, so which is localized in the cancer stroma. And we uh, determine difference between a uh, uh, metabolite distribution between uh, cancer cells and the stroma. And uh, in order to do that, uh, we performed a volcano plot, which shows, shows you the inverse log plot, logarithmic plot of p-values for the y-axis against the function of the logarithmic plot of cancer versus uh, stroma. So you can see here in uh, first, uh, quadrant here, the uh, metabolites enriched in the cancer cell. On the other hand, you can see here in the second quadrant, you can see the list of the metabolites uh, enriched in uh, cancer stroma. So the co conclusion is the cancer cells and the stroma, the distribution of metabolites are totally different. And uh, another very important thing is uh, there are many, many sulfated uh, metabolites in uh, uh, cancer stroma. And we just wondering why. So what is the role of cancer stroma 
in pancreatic cancer. And once again, we challenge to uh, perform the uh, Raman imaging in order to visualize the polysulfide because the polysulfide is a main product of the uh, transsulfuration pathway and the sulfated metabolism. So once again, if you see in the panel B, the cancer, uh, the PDAC, that is a pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma, displayed a huge signal of the uh, polysulfides uh, versus the control. And uh, this is a kaplan mayer plot uh, for the polysulfide in the panel B, so indicating the higher polysulfide group is uh, showing the poor prognosis. So we need to come back to the uh, FFPE. Uh, this is the last part of my uh, presentation. And you can see the upper panel. So you can see the distribution of the enzyme responsible for the generation of the polysulfide. So there is a lot. However, if it goes to the PDAC, this is a cancer. So somehow the, uh, the, the enzyme expression in the uh, uh, ductal cell is gone. And on the other hand, if you pay attention to the panel D, so there are fibrous uh, overexpression of cystocyanin gamma lyase. Uh, this is a, a predominant. So the CSE is expressed uh, not in the cancer cells, but in this is a fibroblast. So the if we choose the patients with a higher CSE expression in a, a cancer-associated fibroblast, you can see the poor prognosis as compared with a group with a lower CSE expression. So that means the CSE expression it plays a key role to determine the poor prognosis of the cancer after the surgery. So this is a conclusion. So cystocyanin gamma lyase generates uh, three different classes of antioxidant. I, I never uh, go in detail, but uh, CSE can produce glutathione, hypotaurine, and polysulfide. But the polysulfide seems to be a very important factor which determines a cancer chemo resistance. And uh, num uh, number two, the cancer associated fibroblast residing in uh, pancreatic cancer tissues generate the polysulfide that spread over the cancer tissue and to cancel the effect of cisplatin or DNA intercalation. So finally, on tissue polysulfide generation with the SARS imaging may benefit the prediction of the post-operative prognosis, shedding light on the improvement of chemotherapy for future. Thank you for attention.